Hello. I was doing re some research into George Soros, actually, because, you know, there seems to be uh, quite a substantial number of people who think that if George Soros were out of the picture, then all the world's problems would end. That is, that it's Soros and his various foundations uh, which are supposed to be in support of democracy, that they are what are causing all the problems. I, I would advise caution with that. I think Soros is wrong, but I think he probably has good intentions. But of course, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And he's not the only multimillionaire or billionaire or whatever who is trying to influence the uh, political life of, well, of anywhere. Uh, Soros is giving money to further the cause of the European Union uh, because he believes that when countries come together, they don't fight each other. He, he knows a lot about money, and he's done very well out of that. But I don't think he knows that much about human nature. However, his problem is not that he means evil, but that he has so much money, it is being used for bad purposes. And he has the power uh, in giving all this money to further these bad purposes, even though I'm sure he doesn't actually think they're bad purposes. But that's not the person I wanted to actually be talking about. I wanted to talk about Timothy Mellon because, you see, while I was doing research on Soros, I came across Timothy Mellon, about who I, ha I have heard only tangentially. I didn't know much about him at all, except the name had been vaguely flying about. But that's the odd thing, because Timothy Mellon is a financial, is a donor to a political cause, just as much as Soros is, at least within America. And yet people aren't accusing him of of evil intent most of the time, except I came across this article in the Washington Post and I thought you might be interested in, in knowing a bit more about Timothy Mellon if you haven't heard much about him. The article is by somebody called Michelle Yi He Lee, which I'm sorry to say sounds a little bit like a joke name, but it isn't. So no laughing there at the back. Now, right, well, here we are. Timothy Mellon, top donor to Trump, super PAC. I don't know what that is. Used racial stereotypes to describe African-Americans in his autobiography. Oh, this is a fun video, isn't it? Timothy Mellon used racial stereotypes to describe African-Americans in his autobiography. So this is the headline that Michelle Yi He Lee, oh, there she is, uh, National Political Enterprise and Accountability Reporter. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Yi He Lee, but I have to tell you that a an accountability reporter also sounds like a joke. And probably it's not entirely coincidental that somebody who is a, an accountability reporter comes up with a headline like this. Although we have to make allowance for the fact she might not have come up with this headline. This might have been some editorial assistant on, uh, on the Washington Post. However, the tone of the article is, well, let's just get on with it. The top donor supporting President Trump's re-election and GOP congressional lawmakers is a reclusive heir to the wealthy Mellon family fortune who used racial stereotypes to describe African-Americans in a self-published auto, auto, autobiography. Now, let's see 
what... Well, first of all, she says he didn't donate $30 million. He poured $30 million into uh, the uh, GOP uh, super PACs in five months. And, and y you get an idea of her attitude by that, that word there. OK, so Timothy Mellon wrote that black people were even more belligerent after the expansion of social programs in the 1960s and 70s, and that Americans who rely on government assistance were slaves of a new master, Uncle Sam. Well, they were even more belligerent. Uh, I don't suppose anyone would call the Watts riots a, um, a model of peace and quiet. And what's going on now in, uh, in the full view of all sorts of uploaded YouTube videos, you can see that a lot of black people are being extremely belligerent. And this is very much at odds with the sort of black people you saw in well, a sort of some sort of cultural depictions, you know, writings and um, interviews. Of course, the, there was no mass media in the same way as there is now. But the middle class aspirations of black people in America in the 40s and the early 50s uh, were in general, a model of um, law-abiding peaceableness, so far as I can make out. Uh, but then, with the expansion of social programs in the 60s and 70s, there was a certain stridency. I think he's wrong about the 60s, because during the 60s, there were the the Martin Luther King marches. And that was where you saw the American black people as a community at its best, I think. Obviously, there were black American soldiers who were also acting at their best, but you didn't see that too much in, you know, in... Um, in real time. However, you did see a lot of the Martin Luther King demonstrations, the equal rights demonstrations, and they were peaceable and the people, black and white, who were on the demonstrations were law-abiding, well-dressed citizens who, uh, especially the black people, wanted to say they just wanted their rights to be given to them as the American Constitution said it should be. So then in the 70s, things started to, to change. And I'd say belligerent is one way of describing the attitude of many American blacks. Uh, the further along the 70s you got. In a self-published uh, 2015 autobiography, Mellon called Social Safety Net Programs, Slavery Redux. That means returned. Uh, and so he's not saying this doesn't mean automatically that it's the black people who are being criticised. Because slavery, the accusation of slavery, is not levelled at the slave, but at the master. And so if he says slavery redux, he's talking about the people who brought slavery back, not the people who are enslaved. Slavery redux, adding, for delivering their votes in the federal elections, they are awarded with yet more and more freebies, food stamps, cell phones, WIC payments, Obamacare, and so on, and on, and on. The largesse is funded by the hardworking folks, fewer and fewer in number who are too honest or too proud to allow themselves to sink into this morass. And 
here, look, this is what he says. The largesse is funded by folks too honest or proud to allow themselves to sink into this morass. So he is talking about other black people. So he is saying there are black people who are honest and proud and hardworking. This is not a racial slur. This is a criticism of the social welfare system. Now, you can argue that he's wrong, that the social welfare system is creating a sort of slavery. But that's not a racial slur against black Americans. The Wyoming-based donor whose family... Oh, yeah, it says here, Mellon declined to comment. Yeah, so it should be, because anything he would have said, I'm assuming uh, declined to comment, possibly means that Miss Yi He Lee uh, rang him up or tried to ring him up to ask what he had to say about this. And he wouldn't answer her. And he was that was very sensible. Because if he had answered her, whatever he would have said would have been twisted into something awful. Because she's already twisted these words, which are absolutely an opinion, but not a racial slur. A statement of fact as he saw them. You could take issue with his uh, the conclusion he draws but not with how he said it. The Wyoming-based donor whose family fortune dates to the Gilded Age gave his first major pro-Trump donation in April. Um, his donations are the biggest known contributions to the group by far, and he's a top donor to GOP. You see, I have made similar criticisms. I, I'll, I'll just talk about a coun the council estates in the borough of Haringey, which has a lot of people in it of various ethnic backgrounds, not specifically black, but there are a lot of counts. There's a lot of council accommodation there. And there are many people who depend very heavily on the council for the, the roofs over their heads. And I have often uh, made the comment that it's like a battery system, you know, battery hens. You, you, you stick them in these boxes, you give them terrible living conditions, and then uh, you wait for them to lay votes for you. Uh, and uh, and that's, what, that's what Timothy Mellon was saying. That's not a racial slur. And if he's talking about these projects having more... Uh, black and Hispanic people in it, in them than white, then I, that's, that's the impression I get anyway. That's a statement of, of what is actually happening. So everyone's not, not commenting. Uh, uh, America First uh, declined to comment on Mellon's contribution. Mellon's company, Pan Am Systems, declined to comment on Mellon's donation or support for Trump. Yeah, why should they comment? The book was available for free download on the company's website until this week, when it was removed after inquiries by the Washington Post. Copies were still available through a separate website. OK, since February 2018, he's given $40 million to three super PACs and tens of thousands of dollars more to an array of GOP candidates. So he's a very strong supporter of the Republican Party. He now rivals other prominent donors who have increased their political giving under Trump. In his autobiography, Mellon wrote that while his family had been Republicans for generations before him, it wasn't until the pre presidency of Ronald Reagan that he fully considered himself a Republican. He said Reagan understood that people did best for themselves when shackled with the least amount of government constraints. So you can see his general attitude. Something had obviously gone dreadfully wrong with the great society and the liberal onslaught. Poor people had become no less poor. Black people, in spite of heroic efforts by, efforts by the establishment to right the wrongs of the past. You see, he's quite willing 
uh, he, he's he's quite aware of the fact that there were wrongs of the past and that the establishment was trying to right them. But uh, the uh, black people became even more belligerent and unwilling to pitch in to improve their own situations. Describing his view of America during Reagan's 1984 re-election campaign. Drugs rose to the level of epidemic. Single parent families became more and more prevalent. Well, this is without doubt. When we have the statistics, especially single parent families, which Thomas Sowell keeps talking about, that when he was growing up, it was uh, something like 20% of the black population. And now it's more like 70%. And uh, most people agree now that fatherless families are the least successful statistically. Obviously, there are going to be some that are going to do quite well. I believe Sol himself was uh, in a single parent family. In his case, I think it was his father who was looking after him. Anyway, I, I don't remember that. The likes of Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton pandered endlessly to fan the flames. And that's without a doubt as well. Uh, these couple of race baiters have done more to damage black lives than almost anyone else. Although there are some other front runners, I suppose. Two decades later, too many Americans are still relying on the government for help, he wrote. Yep. Mellon slammed the educational system for becoming beholden to teachers' unions. Yes, 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 and yes. And that goes for Britain as well as America. And wrote that black studies, women's studies, LGBT studies, they have all cluttered higher education with a mishmash of meaningless tripe designed to brainwash gullible young adults into going along with the dependency syndrome. What is... Uh, let's see what she called it, racial stereotypes about that. He's making absolute sense. <sighs> so it took Abraham Lincoln and the Republican Party to deal with the first scourge of slavery. And now it appears that it is again up to the Republican Party to deal with the contemporary counterpart. Now, he is not mentioning black people at all. He's talking about slavery. This does not, what he has said, does not exclude Western European and South American type people from being caught in this net of slavery as well. All right, well, yeah, that's it. So or I could go on and on. It's going to take too long. But it is interesting how uh, this uh, Michelle Yi He Lee uses these words, racial stereotypes, to describe African-Americans when he did nothing of the sort. And um, ah, that's, uh, that's what anyone who is really interested in democracy is contending with. This uh, tendency of people to think along railway lines. And if there's any uh, anything you disagree with, you just use the word racist and, and you don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like subscribe and share, share, share.